We have a very special guest in the studio as she prepares to perform Mozart's bassoon concerto this weekend with guest conductor Jaron Traub. Alex Eastley, WSO's principal bassoonist and soloist this weekend, stops by the studio for this next installment of 107 Live after completing her undergrad degree at the ultra-prestigious Curtis Institute and earning her master's at McGill. Alex joined the WSO's roster as principal bassoonist in 2007. She's performed with orchestras on both sides of the Atlantic, and she'll be spending the second half of the 2015-16 season in New Zealand. But before she believes on this fantastic voyage, she performs Mozart's bassoon concerto with her home orchestra this weekend and now from our studios in downtown winnipeg it's time for 107 live Eastly. I'll turn on my mic now. I was so moved by your improvised waltz, <laughs> Moon Alex Eastley. Welcome to Classic 107. Thanks for having me. Hey, yeah, yeah, move that mic up. So uh, this is 107 Live, this segment. I've really been enjoying uh, getting to do these things, but especially when I get to bring a lovely friend in who I've known for so long, and yet we haven't talked about all these things that I get to ask you. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start um, this, this Friday and Saturday. This is your your, your shining moment with the WSO. You have this fantastic bassoon concerto coming up in front of you. Now, you've, you're have you so brilliantly educated and well-experienced. Um, I want to ask you how you became a musician. What was your awakening into music? Uh, was bassoon even your first instrument? No, I didn't even know about bassoon for a long time, I think. Um, I just, my parents um, had me and my sister do piano lessons, like, when we were six. Yeah. And, um, which I... I just didn't enjoy practicing that. I just <laughs> they really had to nag me to do that. Um, but I'm glad they did. Um, and uh, then in junior high school, I played clarinet in band. And I loved being in band. I was like the ultimate band geek. Nice. And, um, and then I was involved in, I grew up in Calgary, and I was involved in the Mount Royal music program mm -hmm. after school. And uh, I went to a performance um, because 
there was going to be this famous clarinetist there, and so I was supposed to go and listen to that. And he was playing with a bassoonist, and I just really loved the sound of the bassoon. So before I started high school, I asked my future band teacher if I could play bassoon. And I think he was overjoyed because a lot of the time uh, band teachers kind of have to twist kids' arms to play bassoon. Right. Um, So I think he was very happy that someone actually knew what it was and wanted to play it. Well, I mean, I don't know why anyone would need to be, or whose arm arm would need to be twisted to play the bassoon. It's such a beautiful (laughs) sound. I mean, I'm, I'm of course, biased. I really, really love double reeds especially. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's that warmth that just wraps you. There's no instrument that does it. I mean, the oboe comes close, but there's this depth in the bassoon that you just can't get anywhere else, I think. Yeah, I love it. Um, Yeah, so after after I started playing bassoon, I just really just wanted to, to do that. I didn't even really think about whether or not I would do music in university, I just seemed obvious. Awesome. And of course, then you got into Curtis, which is like Juilliard kids hate the Curtis kids because <laughs> it's like, there's, I mean, there's this incredible Our hierarchy rivals. of yeah. music schools in, in the United States, particularly. And Juilliard and Curtis, I mean, they're always in competition with one another. But I mean, mm-hmm. Curtis is, you know, where all the cool kids go that can play amazingly. Um, so you managed to do that, get there. And then you also uh, did your master's at McGill and you mm-hmm. started playing quite a bit while you were there, like with Les Viandes de Du Roy, yep. um, Jean-Marie Saitouni, who was just in town, you've, you've worked with him. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about your Montreal adventures. Um, well, I went there to study with Stefan Levesque, who's mm-hmm. the principal bassoonist of Montreal Symphony, and who I still talk to a lot. He's like still like my mentor. Mm. He calls me on the way to hockey practice. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, he, uh, I, I really wanted to study with him, and he helped create a lot of opportunities for me, and um, I got to sub with the Montreal Symphony, which mm-hmm. was amazing, um, to really know what it feels like to sit in a professional orchestra and just realize how loud you have to play and <laughs> how that works. Um, and and yeah, I I started to get a little bit of work with Les Villes du Roi, and um, and I also played in Laval, uh, the the regional orchestra there. And so yeah, um, I started to get some of those opportunities. So I was only in Montreal for three years, but it was really fantastic. And, and then I came here. That's amazing. And we're so yeah. lucky to have you. And you started here in 2007, and you've been the yeah. principal bassoonist since then. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've also done some really fun projects in town with some new music, and particularly with Kelly Ruth, who is a loom player. Yeah, it's really um, exciting. That was at the Cluster New Music Festival how many years ago now? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. It was one of the earlier ones. Right. Maybe the first or second one. So like sure. mid 2000s, late, late 2000s. Yeah. 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 yeah so we have a project. It's called Civi, mm-hmm. C-I-V-V-I-E. Mm-hmm. And it's with Kelly Ruth, who's an amazing um, visual and sound artist. And also Nathaniel Felicitas, who's mm. a fantastic cellist. And um, so we, it's basically um, contemporary improv together. And uh, we just actually finished recording an album that hopefully we'll put out sometime soon. Sivvy's new album. Yeah. (laughs) Watch out for it. This is very exciting. I'm also very excited. I, yeah. I knew that you were recording it, but I'm, I still have yet to hear any yeah, of the tracks. Yeah, we track. were just mixing it over the holidays. Very exciting. Yeah. Always new albums. Okay, so now back to the concerto. Mm-hmm. As you've been an orchestral musician, uh, well, here in Winnipeg, for you know, you've installed yourself in the family of the orchestra mm-hmm. as as the principal bassoonist for the last seven years. Uh, now, what or eight years rather? Um, what do you feel is the biggest difference between playing within the orchestra? And then now being in front of it, what what are the differences in you know m- mentality in right. playing? Well, I guess I'll be able to give you a better idea tomorrow because I haven't <laughs> done it yet. Oh. <laughs> so. Rehearsals don't start until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I've I've we did this Mozart Sinfonia Concertant a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, mm-hmm. and but that was with you know three other great players up there. So I haven't actually been up there by myself doing this in a professional context before. Wow. So, whoa, yeah. your debut. Yeah. That's so exciting. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is miraculous. Well, I'm mm-hmm. so excited to see it on Friday. I am coming with bells on and uh, like an entourage. We are going to do a wave. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 
But anyway, so, the, but Mozart, tell us also a little bit about Mozart, because you, you guys also just did In Nozze di Figaro, mm-hmm. right, which has a notoriously difficult bassoon part, well, for the, all the winds, I mean, you guys never stop playing. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of work. And you yeah. mastered the... Yeah, the epic. overture is... On like every uh, the the overture and also the bassoon concerto, for that matter, are on like every audition you'll ever do. So, just that installed in the the standard repertoire. This piece. Yeah. So it was really even just more looking at the rest of the opera because I knew like the first two pages (laughs) super well. (laughs) Winning auditions. I mean, it's such a different world. I just recently started uh, watching that Mozart in the Jungle show because you know everybody's been ranting and raving about it. So I watched it for a little bit, and it just has all of the orchestra drama and also the audition process. You know, you play okay. like, you know, 30 seconds of something and they're like, thank you, Thanks. next. And Bye. they're all blind behind a, a, a curtain, like blind auditions. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting process, guys. I would, I'll, I'm going to recommend the show. I mean, for those of you who don't know what happens in the orchestral world, for orchestral musicians, though, apparently it's really difficult to watch. I haven't seen it. I've heard about it a lot. I've heard lots of mixed things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of anyway, scared all right. to see it. So, <laughs> hey, here we are on our final edition. Well, not our final edition. Our d- edition of Classic 107 Live uh, with Alex Eastley, principal bassoonist of the WSO, playing Mozart's K191 bassoon concerto with the WSO this weekend. Along on the program is Schumann's Second Symphony and Brahms' Haydn Variations or St. Anthony Variations, depending on who you talk to. Uh, it is uh, Friday and Saturday, 8 p.m. at Centennial Concert Hall. Visit the WSO's website for tickets. WSO.ca, or you can go to our website, classic107.com. We uh, thank you. We are so excited to hear you, Alex. (laughs) Uh, It'll be really, really wonderful. Okay, we are going to play uh, on our way out a little bit of this concerto, in fact, the finale. So we're going to jam on that. Uh, But thank you so much for joining us, and we will definitely see you on Friday and Saturday. From our studios in downtown Winnipeg, you've been listening to 107 Live, Classic 107's Intimate Concert Series, the soundtrack for your life.